Well, Vision Sunday. Here we are, 2023. Are you ready? You know, um, I really look forward to these times where we share something of the heart of God for our church, something about the heart of God for, for you as an individual. And I know that it's, it's an emphasis. What is that? Vision Sunday is an emphasis. It's, um, it's a theme. It's, it's taking something that is in Scripture and saying, God says, I want to spotlight that. Not that you don't do anything else, but I want to put the spotlight on that one so that whatever you do, you make sure you get this right. Amen. So that's what we're going to do today. How many of you remember what the theme for 2022 was? Unstoppable. Everybody say unstoppable. And really, as we began to think about our church that's been in existence for 70 years, it's the story of our church. Decade after decade, God has been faithful. God has been good to us. But it's also the story of your life. Because when you look at your own life, I'm quite sure that there are times of difficulty and and, and, uh, challenge. But as you put your trust in Jesus Christ, you are stronger than ever. Let me say amen to that. You are stronger than ever because the spirit of the unstoppable God lives in you. That's why you're unstoppable. So this year, where it's been really a collaborative effort, we're, going to, we're looking at a theme, and it's been a collaborative effort between myself, Pastor Jason, Pastor Alyssa, who are very much behind a lot of the strategy now that happens across all the three campuses. And so I'm going to be basically sharing some of that. The, the, the central thought that we'll share today is so pivotal that it should affect every decision that we make Everything about the present, everything about the future, it actually encompasses our life as those who are followers of Jesus Christ. Do we have anybody here who's a follower of Jesus? Am I talking to the right people? Yeah, right, okay, okay. So today we're joined by uh, our other campuses, and so everybody say hello, Craigie Byrne. This this time we've got to wave at them. Uh, uh, Hello, Doreen. All right, okay, okay, all right. A few of you did. Are you ready to discover what God wants to say? Yes. Okay, everybody in Bandura say yes. yes. Everybody in Craigieburn say yes. yes. You're not in Craigieburn. <laughs> all those of you in Doreen say yes. It's yes. always got to be one. All those in Sunshine say, oh, we haven't planted that work yet. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take you to what is probably the most uh, uh, well-known statement of Jesus, and then we're going to bounce off that. So if you have your Bibles, let's turn to uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, and we'll read this together. But seek first, say it with me, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, now stop there for a moment, or what God wants, right? That's what righteousness is it. And all these things shall be added to you. Everybody say it now with me together. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added to you. So let me build basically a biblical foundation for what this theme is today. It's very important that we understand the the background behind the words of Jesus. Jesus, for a whole chapter, has been speaking about worry, about anxiety, about stress, about people worrying about the future, all of the things of the here and now. And he says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, two verses before, Oh, you of little faith, therefore do not be anxious about what you shall eat or what, we, uh, what shall we drink or, or what shall we wear. Why are you excessively worrying about the here and now? Why is it that your focus is only on the temporal? You need to, yes, the here and now is important, but it's not the most important thing. There's far, things far more important. Do you not believe, he's saying to the crowd. He's saying to the disciples, he's saying to you, do you not believe that there is a heavenly Father who knows your needs? Do you not believe that he's able to provide for you? Not just give you enough, but more than enough. Do you not believe that he is with you, that he cares for you? And he's, he's having this, 
He's having this conversation with them. Do you not believe if he looks after the creation, he looks after the lilies of the field, if he looks after the birds of the air, and will he not look after you? Why, oh, you of little faith, do you not believe that our heavenly Father is for you? And of course, there was nowhere for them to go in that, in, in that thinking. And then he says this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 32. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows that you need them. In other words, the pagans seek after just the here and now. They just strive after that. They're consumed with the here and now. But you, you are to be different. Everybody say different. You are in the world, but you're not of the world. You are to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these other things shall be added to you. You are to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as a it is in heaven. Everything that you see around you is going to collapse. Everything that you see around you is temporary. You are to focus on eternal matters. That's what matters the most in life. Seek first. And the theme for this year is His kingdom come. His kingdom come. His kingdom come. I speak it over this church. I speak it over your life. Every good thing from God for the sake of eternity. His kingdom come. Jesus said, seek first. Seek first. Why did he say that? Well, he said that because we have a tendency to focus on things which are minor. We have a a tendency to focus on things which are insignificant. And then what happens? We give God the leftovers. And if you live a life like that, you're going to live with regret. When you get to the end of your life, you're going to live with loss. And Jesus says, I want to show you that if you put, listen to me, listen to me. If you put the first things in first, everything else will fall into place. That's what he's saying. If you put the first things in first, everything else will fall into place. If you don't, you create a mess. I don't know how many of you put together a flat pack. How many of you know what flat packs are? They're, they're from the devil. <laughs> a flat pack is a furniture that you get that comes in like in very, very thin, and like it's all, all the panels, nothing is being put together. And then you have got to put that thing together. And most of the times it comes with instructions. Though at times I've actually had flat packs that have come with no instructions. I'm thinking, how am I supposed to put this thing together? But most of the time it comes with instructions. And what do they say? They say to you, you are to lay all the, all the same, all the panels A over here, all the panel B over here, all the same screws over here, and then all the same bolts over here. And everything is laid out. And if you just follow the instructions... It should work out. I'll be honest, I'm not good at it at all. Uh, that was Lois. Lois is great. She's methodical. She's very, if you understand anything about Lois, she's very methodical in the way she lives her life and puts these flat packs together. And, but I, I'm just too impatient. It's a bit like, really? Do I have to read these instructions? I mean, how hard can it be? Well, it is hard. And I can't tell you the amount of times I thought, you know, I reckon this one here goes first and this one here, you know, and I put it together and next thing you know, I've got extra pieces and I'm thinking, oh my God, they gave me extra pieces. How come this one's so long? I'll just chop that off. And and it's like, it's a mess. It's a complete mess because I'm not following the order. I'm not, I've created a mess. And see, when God looks at our life, it's far more complicated than a flat pack. He says, in this highly complex world, you need to make sure that you get the first things in first. And the first thing is the kingdom of God. His righteousness, that all these other things shall be added to you. He needs to be first. First. Everybody say first. First in your thinking. First in your prayers. 
first in your relationships, first in your finance, first in your time, first in your priorities, first. When you put him in first, everything else will fall into place. But if you try to get the reverse, everything will fall apart. That's what Jesus says, I'm doing you a favor. I'm explaining to you. You can't wing it in life. You can't wing it. So I'm going to, you can summarize what I'm going to share, and then Pastor Jason's going to come in a few moments in three words. Seek, seed, and steps. Everybody say it with me. Seek, seed, and steps. Number one, we've already talked about it. We will seek the kingdom of God first. To love God, to honor God, that first. But let me, now first of all, let me explain something to you. So they're all on the same page. What is the kingdom of God? Seek first the kingdom of God. What is that? What is the kingdom of God? Well, we could be here for a long time, but let me give you a bit of a summary. The kingdom of God is God's reign and his rule over your life and over our situation, over the earth. It has three aspects to it. Number one, the kingdom of God is in you. It's in you. The moment you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord, He came and He lived within you. Not only is He your Savior, but now He is your Lord and He is your King and you've submitted under His authority. You, listen to me, you can't do what you want. He is your King and He is your Lord. So the kingdom of God is within you. He reigns within you. The second thing is the kingdom of God has got a future component to it where it will be totally fulfilled. And this is what we read in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. It says, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And what's the last line? And he shall reign forever. Handles Messiah. Right there. There will come a time when God will remove all evil and he will reign universally right across every planet, every star system. He will reign. But then there's another component. The kingdom of God is already in this world since the time of Jesus. There came a time where people were asking Jesus, well, tell us, where is the kingdom of God? Is it over here? And is it over there? Where is it? Where is it going to manifest itself? And, and Jesus said to him, don't worry about over there and over here. He says these words in Luke chapter 17, verse 20 to 21. For the kingdom of God, read it with me, is already among you. It's in your midst. It is here. Everybody say, it's here. That's why Jesus went about helping the poor, healing the sick, casting out demons, pushing back the darkness. He was manifesting the kingdom of God. And you and I have got the capacity by the Holy Spirit to do exactly the same. We are progressively bringing the kingdom of God. We're pushing back the darkness. With this darkness all around us. But we are pushing it back by the power of Jesus' name. The power and the manifestation of the kingdom. But you know, the disciples really didn't get it. Jesus is trying to tell them, this is the kingdom. But they just weren't getting it. They thought that the kingdom of God is when, when God was going to come down and remove the Roman rule and set up the Davidic kingdom. And he just, he just, he's, they're not getting it. And so he tells a couple of parables, a couple of stories. And that's what I want to do. As I seek to illuminate, what, what is the kingdom of God? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these other things shall be added to you. Okay, let's read the story. Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. And he put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in the field. That's the world. It is the smallest of agricultural seeds, but when it has grown up, it becomes larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree that the birds of the air come and make their nests in its branches. And then he says in verse 33, and he told him another parable, and he says, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took, and what did she do? What did she, do? she hid it in three measures of flour, which is 27 kilos, by the way, until it all leavened. So he says, you want to know what the kingdom of God is? It's like leaven, and it's like 
a seed, a small seed. Two images God is painting. Jesus is painting for them. And he's saying the same thing. The kingdom of God starts small, but it grows and it grows. It multiplies and it starts taking over the earth. I don't know if any of you have ever baked a, a bread. Uh, I, I've, I've had a little bit of experience with it and a little bit of success now and then. And, but, you know, you put a little bit of leaven and then you put it in the flour, you put, insert it into the flour, and then you put it into a room, a right temperature, and you see this thing, it's like, shh, like, whoa, like multiple explosions of gas that are being released in that, that dough, and then when that happens, then you can bake it. And then it's very similar. Jesus says, it's like a seed. You plant the seed into the ground. Notice the leaven goes into the dough. The seed goes into the ground, both symbolizing the earth. And what happens is it grows and it grows. And you think, wow, well, this little seed, you know, a mustard seed so small. If, you just, if you're not careful, you'll blow it out of your hand, right? It's so small and it grows. Do you know why Jesus told this story? Because at the end of Jesus' ministry, and you know that he spoke to thousands and he fed the 5,000 and he fed so many others, probably he ministered to hundreds of thousands during his lifetime. Do you know how many people were left? 120. 120 were left in the upper room. And the disciples must have thought to themselves, Jesus, how are we possibly going to take the gospel? How are we going to disciple the nations? They would have been discouraged. They would have thought to themselves, Lord, this is just not possible. And he's encouraging them to listen. It doesn't matter where it starts. It's where it finishes. Because it starts like a seed. Don't worry what other people are saying. I'm sure that there'll be people who are saying to the disciples, oh, you know, what are you going to do? 120 of you going to transform the world? Come on. You'll never do. He says, don't listen to them. Don't listen to them because they don't understand. And listen to me. Maybe you're going through something. You're believing God for something and it's not happening as quick as you want it to happen. And you're getting a bit discouraged and, and things are not happening. Don't get discouraged. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. Because God always starts with a seed. God always starts with something which is really small. I heard somebody say this a, a long time ago. They said, we overestimate what we can do in a short period of time, but we underestimate what we can do in a long period of time when God is with us. So just don't let... The power is in the seed. The power is not in the preaching. The power is in the seed, the Word of God, when it's preached and when it's believed with all of our heart. So let me summarize. We will seek. We'll seek the kingdom of God first. Because when you get the first things in first, everything else falls into place. And then the seed. We won't despise the small beginnings. I think about this church. It started with just a few people who came out from Richmond and a few seeds just, just had nothing. And look what God has done. Look what God has done. We will not despise the seed because God starts with small things. And then I'll finish off with this. Matthew, the birds of the air. Matthew 13, 31. I'm laying a, a, a biblical foundation for the theme. It says... It says this, this smallest of seeds, when it is grown, it becomes larger than all the garden plants. And it becomes a tree. So that the, everybody say the birds of the air. What's that mean? What's that mean? Come and make it nest. You know, what, that, you know why that's so significant? The birds of the air signify the nations of the world. From this little seed that's planted in the ground. Nobody sees it. It will grow into a plant that the nations of the world will come and be affected by it. It is going to become an invincible force, an unstoppable force that no one will be ever, ever able to extinguish completely. And the fact is today, the spread of the, of the message of Christ is virtually in every nation of the world. 
Every Sunday, there are people who are worshipping God in every nation of the world. More than any other religion, more than any other philosophy, ideology, whatever you call it. The message of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it's a seed that was planted in the ground by God himself. And this thing is, is going to grow and it's going to grow. You know, from 120 people who received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, 120, what's that? Probably about as many people as this, this section here, that's all. Today, there are five to 600 million spirit-filled believers who believe, come on, who believe in spiritual gifts, who speak in other tongues, who believe that God still does miracles. And that is, that's not even counting all the evangelical people that we love dearly. We love them dearly. God is from a seed that was planted in the ground. The kingdom of God is like a seed that is planted in the ground. And the other thing about a seed is that it grows slowly and constantly. I don't know about you, when I plant something, I want to see it grow overnight. I go out there, has it grown? I've got these trees that I just planted recently. Magnolias, has it grown? Nah, nothing. Go out the next day, watering it, shh, nah, it's not growing. Why? Because things grow steady and constant. That's what he's trying to tell us. He says, that this what I'm planting on the earth, it's not going to be sudden, but it's going to be, it's going to be steady and constant. Steady. The only thing that grows suddenly in my garden is weeds. I think, where did that come from? I was driving out my driveway, and I'm thinking, there's all these weeds in the front garden. I, th- I thought, they were not there yesterday. Where did they come from? It's like they grow. But when, what God does is steady and constant, never stopping, despite the opposition, despite whether Christianity is popular or not popular, whether we like it or not, it doesn't make a speck of difference. God is working in the earth. It will never stop because it's His seed. It's His Word. The Word of God is not bound. You cannot incarcerate it. The Word of God. And so it's God's intention that the church grows and it grows. Not, Jesus is not coming back with some anemic thing. So I'm barely holding on. I'm holding on. Come quickly. Now, nah, that's not what I read. It's a seed that grows, spreading everywhere in our workplace and our schools and in our families. It just can't be stopped. That's what he intended. His kingdom come. Everybody say that. His kingdom come. But it's not enough. One, we need to seek it. Because when I seek God, the kingdom of God first, everything else falls into place. Two, a seed. I'm not going to despise if it starts small, because I know it's going to grow. But then we have to take steps for it to come to the earth. And and that's where I'm going to ask Pastor Jason to come and and speak a few moments about the strategy for this year because we have to do it together. Everybody say together. It's not just one or two people, but together we're powerful. Together there's synergy. Together we're able to achieve what God wants us to do. And there's going to be a call for us to live as kingdom-minded people today. But before he comes, I want you to have a look at this short clip and just to capture some of the things that we've spoken about. But and but I want you to put your hands together for Pastor Jason. Come on. God's kingdom isn't out of reach. Say yes to Jesus and you're in. But he isn't just our saviour, he's our king, our lord. Jesus rules, he reigns. We're citizens of his kingdom, wide awake to his purposes, called to be an access point to heaven. We live to bring the mission, the power, the manifestations of heaven to our reality. 
so the world would know where true redemption, freedom, healing, loving community, and peace come from. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. For the sake of eternity, we live for something larger than ourselves. Right now is where time touches eternity. Submit to Christ's supreme reign over your life. Seek first his kingdom, and then we will see the light break through the darkness. We will see history, our lives, our church reflect his kingdom. Heaven's realm manifests right here, right now. Get ready, church. The word for 2023 is kingdom. Kingdom culture, kingdom minded, kingdom calling, kingdom mission, a kingdom life. His kingdom come for the sake of eternity. Everyone say kingdom. Yeah. Kingdom. Hey, um, can we just honour our senior pastors this morning, Pastor John and Lois? Would you put your hands together? For me? I've um, I've been prepping uh, this short uh, few minutes uh, to kind of just share what the steps look like, and uh, to do this for twenty five years, casting vision, sharing with us, and getting the the heart of God, and sharing with people, and bringing people along the journey. Uh, what an incredible thing and what an incredible gift you are to our church. Thank you so much. Come on, put your hands together one more time. Doreen, Craig Yvern, an incredible heart. The kingdom of God. And why? For the sake of eternity, to fill heaven, to bring heaven on earth, to show the nature, to show the heart of God, that we will seek first his kingdom, that we won't despise small beginnings, and finally that uh, it will be in our steps. You see, when it's in your steps, it becomes more than just a fancy word that spins around behind you. Because the thing is, is that it's beyond your feelings. You know, kingdom, everyone say kingdom. kingdom. It can sound pretty cool. Like, as in, like, you know, it's a bit of a, it could be a buzzword for a, for a week. It could be a feeling that you have going, whoa, that is such a cool word. I love it. We should put it on a T-shirt. We haven't put it on a T-shirt. We'll get back to that in a sec. But the thing is, is that... When you think about it, it's not about our feelings, but when the kingdom reigns, it reigns in your feet. It is not just an emotional thing that takes place, but it should be in the steps that we take each and every day. The kingdom of God is his reign and rule in our life. It is to say that Jesus is king. Jesus is king. He reigns and he rules. This is John chapter 18, verse 36 to 38. It says, this is a conversation between Pilate and Jesus. And he says, Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? Are you a king? And Jesus answered, you, you say rightly that I am... This is Jesus in boss mode right now. And he's saying, you say rightly, I am king. But, but what does it mean? What does it look like when Jesus has reign and rule over your life? Well, let me give you an example. Who, uh, for a majority of us, not our, not our jam kids right here, but for a majority of us... Uh, how are you? Um, all of us drive. Majority of us drive. Who drives with their right hand here? Just put your hand up real quick. Doreen, Craig, you've been here. All right. Who drives with their left hand here? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. Uh, who drives correctly with both hands on the nine and on the three? Who's, who's that person? Who's doing that? There's a lot. I don't mean to say that. But it's, it's funny, isn't it? Like, I've got a couple of kids uh, and... You know, sometimes I can be caught driving and literally with one hand on the steering wheel, I'm like one of them have dropped something in the back and you're kind of like reaching over. Have you ever done that before? Or like you're just yelling for fun, like as in you're just like losing it at your kids as you're driving. Let me tell you something. Let me ask you a question. Right hand, left hand, both hands, fantastic. Tell me, how do you drive when a, a, a police car is present? <laughs> does, does it have an impact on your whole body? I was yelling at my kids just before. I'm like, yes, sir. Like, as in, like, it changes everything you do, right? Like, as in, if you, even if they're 300 meters away, you're going, oh, my goodness. You start saying sweet things. They can't even hear you, but you're just going, please, gosh. Like, as in, and every, it changes every part of your body. Listen, when it, when it comes to the presence of police car, it changes every inch of your body. When it comes to the presence of God, it should change every inch of your body. His reign and rule is like having the presence of God in your life. As in he's saying, hey, this is every decision of my life, it is going to move. Every area of my life, it is going to have an impact. That is the same thing that takes place. When Jesus is king of our life, it has an impact. He isn't the type of royalty 
that we watch on Netflix and learn about. He isn't the type of royalty that has an aura about them, but he's the type of royalty that should have power and authority over our lives. It is beyond a Sunday and a reverent moment on a Sunday morning, but it would have an impact on Monday where he will have authority and reign in our lives. You know, when we say Jesus is king, do you know what it's saying? God, I am taking you seriously. That's what it's saying. When, when the kingdom reigns in your life, it is saying, God, I am taking you seriously. So this morning, I have the, the short privilege of sharing what does this look like for Encompass Church across our locations in Doreen and in Craigieburn, here in Bandura. What, what will it mean for Encompass this year as we focus on kingdom? These are three things, really briefly, we're going to snap through, but this is very much what it's going to look like, okay? Like literally the operational side of it all. And firstly is kingdom relationships. Everyone say kingdom relationships. In John chapter 17, this is Christ's call to unity. And this is what it says in John 17 verse 11. It says, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be as one as we are one. Verse 22, it says, I've given them glory that you gave me, that they may be as one as we are one. And finally, in verse 23, it says, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. This is Christ's call to unity. And, And I believe that we're currently living in a society, living in a world that is undivided. Sorry, that is divided. It is a divided world, and people are literally looking. You, you can see it in how we operate. We're looking for a unifying solution. We're looking for someone to show us what does unity look like. And I believe the call to the church is to show the world what unity is. It is to show the world what heaven looks like on earth. I remember I was on the east side of town a couple of months ago with my wife. It was a date night. It was a very rare occasion. No kids. And we're in this pizzeria. And there's literally two big tables full of people. And they they were the most odd-looking people you would ever meet. I don't want to judge them. But to be honest, and I don't want to judge you guys, but it kind of looked like a bunch of you guys. No, no, no. I'm being serious. As in, there were some older people and then there were some real young people. There were some single people and there were people like 10, 15 kids. There was like random people from all parts of the world. It looked like heaven on earth. I didn't place a bet with my wife, but I did say this. Babe, I bet you 10 bucks they're Christian. And I cashed in 10 bucks at the end of this night. (laughs) We don't bet here. Gamble responsibly. Um, But here's the thing. You're allowed to laugh in church. It's okay. But, But here's the thing. I said to them, I, I, I bet you, I, I think they are going to pray when the food comes out. And literally they were talking like heaven on earth and their food comes out and everything stops. And they all stopped and they prayed together. And I thought, how marvelous is this look of unity? Heaven on earth. Some people could look at it and go, man, it looks so awkward. No, no, no. It was beautiful, to be honest. Some people could say it looked a little bit weird, but let me tell you, it was family. People could say it looked earthly, but it was heavenly. This is what it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 48. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. It goes on to say that they devoted themselves and they ate together. They prayed together. They also believed together. They had things in common. It didn't mean that they all looked and talked the same, but they had a common purpose. It wasn't that they were all looking and saying the same things, but they had a common purpose purpose. This year, across all our campuses, we want to have a strong focus on kingdom relationships. So what does this look like? What does this mean? Is that we're going to have clear leadership across every campus. So again, this is the first time we've probably gone through, uh, I guess, uh, who's who in the zoo and who's doing what right now. But in every location, in Doreen, it will be Shane Lepp and Millie Lepp, Pastor Shane and Millie Lepp, who will be leading life groups in Doreen. In Craigieburn, It'll be Nimelin and Danusha who have been doing an incredible job uh, there in Craigieburn. For the new leadership here for our life group space this year, uh, we've actually dragged back Bill and Dee Doncios from Craigieburn. Would you just quickly stand to your feet? 
These guys just helped us launch our Craigie Burn campus, but they're back now and they're going to be leading and focusing in on our life group space here in Bandura. You won't hear just one thought a year about life groups. You're going to constantly hear about the, the, the priority on life groups. Could I encourage you as a church? I know you're super busy, but would you consider making room for your church family? I'm not saying that you need to say yes straight away, but would you not say no straight away? And would you say, hey, when they tap me on the shoulder, when they come to you in Doreen or Craigie Burn, would you say, hey, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to pray about this and I'm going to seek God about it. You know, people grow. People are discipled, not on their own, but they're discipled in life groups. They are discipled with people around them. You know, um, I'll say this. Sometimes as a church, you can get kind of stuck in serving to belong. We've got to get out of that. It shouldn't take serving to get someone connected into a church community. You shouldn't have to do anything to feel connected in a church community. And so I want to encourage us as a church, as our leadership teams are lead this way, that let's seek to have kingdom relationships with each other. Amen? Amen. Let's reflect heaven on earth. Can you imagine a church, side note, imagine a church that had more people in life groups than on a Sunday morning? That would be, honestly, I believe that would be an amazing reflection of heaven on earth. Anyway, kingdom relationship. Number two is kingdom giving. Everyone say kingdom giving. Say it like you actually mean it. Kingdom giving. giving. A little bit better. Anyway, remember, kingdom, uh, the kingdom living is not a feeling, but it happens in your feet. Here's the thing. Our, our church team, our staff, they are hearing us say five words a lot this year. And the five words are not for the sake of eternity. They wish it was, uh, but sometimes we do it. But there's another five words that our team are continually hearing in 2023. And this is what it is. And some of you hear it from your wife. It's, it's not in the budget. Has anyone, anyone else? Like, it's not in the budget. Like, our team, very clearly this year, know what is a priority for our church. And that means making adjustments to how we function and how we operate during the week. And I'll I'll get into the detail of why it's not in the budget. Firstly, is that we have always been a missions-orientated church. We've always had a priority to give locally and globally to missions. We've always partnered with Encompass Care, Jana and the team, and, and serving and supporting our local community. We support countries like India and Sri Lanka, Zambia and Thailand, Eastern Europe, Uganda, Lesotho, Cambodia, Indonesia, and many more. We, have, we are a missions-orientated church. But over the last few months, as we've been setting budgets moving forward for all our campuses, there has been a deep desire to advance the kingdom of God. There's been a deep desire to prioritise the advancement of the kingdom. So as a team and uh, with the approval of the board, as we seek God's kingdom first, this is what we've done. Across every location, we have placed it as a priority. Everyone say priority. It is a priority in our budget to to work towards giving 10% of our income to local and global missions. What I mean by that is a priority, is the first thing that we do. So what does this mean? And it's super clear. We're going to try and address this as clearly as possible. If you call Encompass Home, we hope that you are tithing here. That is a biblical thing. But out of the tithe as a church, we are going to be directly giving to missions on your behalf. So no matter if you call and come, so if you're giving here at any location, you can say, hey, listen, they are prioritizing the kingdom. I am giving locally and globally. But some of you might say, but, but wait a second, like I said, I, I kind of just want to give directly to missions. Well, let me tell you, if you continue to do that, that will directly go. It will be over and above what we are already budgeted to do. So if you, are gifted to, of, if you have a gift of generosity, you say, I really want to do this. You'll, continue to, you'll be able to continually do that. But as a church, we're saying we are taking God seriously. This is beyond all the numbers, but this is saying, God, we are putting you first in everything that we do. So in every location in Doreen and Craigieburn here, you're going to continually hear stories about the impact that we're having 
around the world. Uh, Jinu and Nithya. Jinu's just sitting here. Would you just stand for a moment? Uh, would you put your hands together for Jinu? Jinu and his wife Nithya will be heading up the mission space here in our Bandura location. Whenever you see them on platform, they're going to tell you a story about how our generosity is impacting the world, about how it is building the kingdom of God. If anyone wants to go on a missions trip, we believe by the end of this year that we'll be going again on a missions trip. And listen, I want to encourage you, tap them on the shoulder, ask them some information. Let's get along and let's go and reach the lost. It should excite you. This generosity excites me. Something grows in me because the world of the generous, what does it do? It gets larger and larger. Kingdom relationships, kingdom giving, and finally is kingdom living. Everyone say kingdom living. The kingdom of God is his reign and rule in my life. Everyone say my life. Not the person next to you, not the pastors or someone else, but it is in my life. This is personal. And what you'll find more and more as you learn about the kingdom is that it's not about you. It is not about you. You know, an Olympian that trains and they compete, um, imagine they won their little race that they were in. They don't stand on the podium and the event managers don't run up to them and the event managers don't run up to them and say, hey, I just want to know, what music do you want us to play? Like, what's your favourite jam? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, as in, it, it has nothing to do with them. As much as they were running and training personally, it was always for their country. It was always for the kingdom that they represent. Let me tell you something. As God moves in your life, as God speaks to you, as you take faith steps this year, it is not to play your jam, but it's to bring glory to God. It is to say, God, you deserve it all. You are worthy of it all. Kingdom living is saying it's not about me. And I just want to share a couple of stories just to close here. You know, our Craigieburn campus, that was us being kingdom orientated to say, you know, there was a group of people that said, I'm committing the next 12, potentially the rest of my life to the local church in Craigieburn. And they gave up being on front rows or second rows or being part of key areas of Bandura to say we are launching Craigieburn next year. No matter what, we are reaching more lost people for Jesus. That's, that's a kingdom lifestyle. I have some good news and bad news. Uh, where's Marvel? Where's Marvel? Marvel's already gone. Uh, Marvel's at the back there. He, he was actually worship leading this morning. Um, last year, he was doing Accelerate, and it was very clear to us that God's hand was on Marvel's life. Very clear. And the thing is, is that the easy thing to do as pastors and leaders is to go, let's just keep him in Mandura because he leads so well here, you know, like, as in, look, a good Indian boy, like as in, what a great guy. And, and can I just say, he leads with such, like, he, rawness, but he leads with such authority. He's got a softness of the Holy Spirit. It's such a beautiful thing. The easy thing to do was to do nothing, but we saw God's hand over his life. And so our part to it is to say, we're going to step out of the comfy and the cozy I'm going to put the kingdom of God first. And so we, we spoke to Marvel last year and we said, hey, we want to create an opportunity for you. This opportunity doesn't exist yet, but we, we need to create something for you. So we said, hey, would you consider going and leading our Craigie Burn worship team next year? He went away for like two months. We didn't see him. I thought he left our church. I just thought, what's going on? He came back to us a couple of weeks ago. And it was, and even the, the rest of the story you can hear, it was a yes from the Spirit. It's like he's saying, I, I am ready for this. With all humility, I don't know what I'm doing, but I trust that God has, has got his hand over my life. And you could hear it from him just saying, I am so ready for this. And we believe he is. We believe he's going to do great things in Craigie Burn. I believe that the worship team that he is going to lead is going to change that area. But I, there's something about this young man. I can see it. If we just kept him here, he doesn't get to take the next step. But we've got to seek first the kingdom of God. It is a bigger picture. It won't be about you. It will always be about the kingdom. For those of you that don't know, there's a family by the name of the Franks. Everyone say the Franks. Henry and Vicky 
Alex and William. They're two young sons in high school. You don't know them because they've been in our Doreen campus for 11 years. That is longer than Doreen's ever existed. Like as in, you know, like as in the actual suburb itself. Like, I'm just joking, it's a joke. But, you know, it's a long time. And you gotta understand like as in Henry and Vicky, they've got so much great family in Doreen. They do an incredible job helping lead that church in Doreen. But last year with the moves coming from Bandura to, to Craigieburn, et cetera, et cetera, we thought, you know what, what a great opportunity potentially for someone like Henry and Vicky to move across to Craigieburn. And we had a chat with them. And you should, to be in the room, this is what it was like. I could, you could just sense it. They weren't saying yes to a pastoral leader. They were saying yes to the kingdom. They were, this, they were saying, this is a cause greater than me. And I don't know what God's doing right now, but we're going to be obedient to his voice and the peace that we receive from him. Can I tell you, the cozy thing to do is to stay. But you know, when it comes to the kingdom relationships, we want to love one another, kingdom family. But we're also an army that is building the kingdom of God. We are family but we are an army building and extending the territory for Jesus. And I want to encourage us as we embrace this word kingdom, as we embrace this theme, this emphasis for this year, that we will see things with a heavenly perspective. Not for my will, but your will, Jesus, be done. On earth as it is in heaven going to close right now, but um, I'm about to hand over to our team, but I'll just share this one last thought. Uh, I was talking to the Holy Spirit this week, and uh, when we're planning, we've had a few people ask, where's the, where's the merch? Like, where's, where's the t-shirts, bro? Uh, and uh, I said, There's, we just weren't vibing the, the t-shirts today. So we're not doing it. But I'm having this chat with the Holy Spirit. I'm like going, Holy Spirit, you can't have a vision Sunday without T-shirts. Like as in, is this real? Like what's happening? <laughs> no, but you know, you can have some silly conversations. Like, and the Holy Spirit very clearly, he said to me, no, 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 no. The vision won't be on people's T-shirts this year. It'll be on their feet. It'll be how they walk it out. It'll be how they talk it out. This is, this is the image. This is the image that I got. Whether you're in Craigieburn, whether you're in Doreen, whether you're here, is that there are supernatural boxes of shoes sitting in front of you right now. And he's saying they're kingdom shoes. It's got big writing on it. And he's asking everyone in this room, in every location, will you put them on this year? I want you to walk in places that you've never walked before. I want you to see things that you've never seen before. You're going to experience things that you've never experienced before. My ways are greater than your ways. I'm about to move like you've never seen, but you've got to throw on your kingdom shoes. Right now across our locations in Doreen and Craven, I'm going to hand over Pastor um, Mark and Pastor Colin. They're going to close and they're going to uh, just pray a prayer in our locations that says, hey, would you embrace this vision this year? Would you embrace the kingdom of God? Come on, Bundura, can we put our hands together for our campuses? I don't want to lie. You guys are incredible to preach to, but can I tell you something? The way our campuses lean into a screen is phenomenal. They will bring out the best in a screen. Like as in, they just, they, like it, it is quite amazing how much they lean in. And I think you should always understand what, what their experience is. It's a little bit different, but they lean in. It's all about how you lean in. Would you close your eyes across this room? We're going to pray. I want you to grab this image right now of some spiritual shoes in front of you this morning. Some kingdom come shoes, perfectly made for you. And it's an invitation Will you put them on? For your family? For your friends and finances? For that health situation? You might be going, but seek first the kingdom of God and all these things. That you won't despise small beginnings, the seed moments, but you will choose 
to embrace the kingdom, his reign and his rule in your life. And today, if, if you're just saying, oh, I want to be part of this. I want to embrace his kingdom, his reign, his rule, his power, his authority in my life today, this year, it's going to be different. I want to see things from a heavenly, from an eternal perspective right now. If you want to join us this year, would you just begin to stand to your feet right now? Say, God, I want you to move. I believe you're going to speak to people. I want to experience your kingdom this year. I'm putting on heavenly shoes. Show me, God, what you're going to do. Reveal to me. I want to walk with you. Would you lift both hands to the ceiling and surrender to him? Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we ask right now that as we put on these these spiritual shoes, these kingdom shoes, that you will give us a heavenly perspective on earthly things. Lord God, that you will take us higher. You'll take us to places that we have never been and it won't be for us, but it'll be all for your glory. Lord God, we pray right now that there'll be from this day forth a kingdom orientation in our minds, a kingdom orientation in our hearts, in every decision, in every moment, in every conversation, we will have the kingdom reigning and ruling in our hearts. Lord God, would you have your way? Would you say that to God right now? Have your way in my heart today. Have your way in our hearts, God. Will you reign, God? Will you rule? Be the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Direct our steps, open doors. One last thing. Where you're about to step this year, you've never been before. Where you're about to walk this year, you have never experienced before. And and some of you can't even imagine it, but here's the thing is that when it's for His kingdom, He'll always be with you. When the kingdom of God reigns in your heart, you won't be doing this alone. You're going to be walking into new places and new spaces, but it'll be with Him and for Him and through Him. We're going to sing this song about His reign and about His rule. Could I encourage you? Would you just ask God to stir your heart? Stir your soul. 